Valve is firing back, but is it too late? Hi everybody, this is Metallic Penguin, and Valve is re-releasing, or releasing a brand new, I suppose, Steam machine. This is going to be in 2026, pricing and such TBD, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the video. I think this is going to be really, really cool. First, here's a little bit of background about Microsoft. Microsoft at present has a huge market share in the gaming community, such to the point that they can dictate what, like who plays what where, and I think, honestly, they're kind of warping computing in general and using their gaming dominance to do it. I suppose one of the biggest red flags I have, or, or flags, I shouldn't even call it red, but one of the biggest flags I have with this is how is Steam going to dovetail with right to repair, and is the Steam machine going to give you a similar OS to what Steam OS is now in the world of Linux now. Like, you can put Steam OS right now on a PC. There are several prominent influencers who have done so. And now here's some of my thoughts on Microsoft. Ever since at least 2013, Microsoft has essentially all but dominated the gaming space. They won the console wars. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, but I think the other thing they did was they changed the conversation. And they changed what was possible. What they're doing with anti-cheat with some of their biggest games is really holding the gaming community back. And it's holding wider adoption of Linux uh, back from, you know, I would argue the, the PC gamer overall. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but almost 70% of the American public considers themselves uh, to be somewhat in the gaming space. Meaning that Microsoft, with its dominance of Windows, is holding people back from exploring operating system alternatives. And as somebody who uses Linux on a daily basis, I personally find that very unattractive and frankly mean-spirited. The thing that attracted me the most to Linux, other than the, the David versus Goliath or the small guy versus the big guy, is I want a credible alternative to what I see as an operating system monopoly that doesn't always have my best interest in mind. Everybody who uses a computer uh, recently has a story about, well, somebody I know had a laptop and their Wi-Fi was updated away or somebody had this and this graphics card was updated away, etc. And that's because of Microsoft. It's because of Microsoft's monopoly with the Windows system that they don't actually have to have good quality and that's one of the things I like about Linux and I think the Steam machine produced by Steam's parent company Valve could open up a lot of users to the potential of Linux not just in gaming but in their computing lives and that's why I think the Steam machine is one of the most important pieces of hardware to come out in the last several years. This is not Valve's first attempt at making a Steam Machine. Valve previously had released the Steam Machine and it flopped. People have largely said it flopped because Alienware was the producer of the hardware and Alienware hardware, to say the least, has gotten really, really bad. But I want to talk a little bit more about the
the present, you know, what Valve is doing presently with the Steam Machine. It tried this years ago and actually developed SteamOS actively at least since 2018, if not well before that. I thought I'd go over some specs of the Steam Machine and talk about some flags, be they red or green, as a Linux user that I see basically right off the jump. AMD Zen 4 for the CPU, That's that seems fine. Cores, 6 or 12, I feel like you have an option there. RAM, 16 gigabytes, sure, that seems reasonable given that this is a game, gaming computer. Uh, the graphics card RAM, which is separate from the RAM, is going to be 8 gigabytes, again, reasonable storage. Now, this is where I start to, this is one of the red flags. The low end of the storage is 512 gigs. That, I think, is a little extreme. The top end, I wish they'd make it more, but it's two terabytes. Now, it's Wi-Fi compatible. It's got It's going to have Bluetooth. And the front I.O., it's going to have two 3.0 USB ports and a Type-A in the front and a micro SD card slot. Okay, they're marketing this in all their videos and promotional material as something you're going to be able to plug a controller in. That was immediately a red flag with me because as a Linux user, one of the things about Linux immediately is you're expected to update it on your own. Okay, so are they going to start updating SteamOS? That's my question. Okay, that's a question that I have immediately. Are they going to start updating SteamOS? As a Linux user, as a daily driver of, of Linux, I don't have Windows in my house. Or I have Windows, but, you know, computer Windows. I don't have computer Windows in my house. Um, as a daily driver of Linux, one of the massive red flags I have is I don't want a company updating my computer. That's why I switched to Linux in the first place. Um, and also, is that SteamOS is an operating system that you can run on a computer. But, I think, I don't know if it's going to be a, a hybridized version of SteamOS or if they're going to change SteamOS. I wonder how a an owner of a, of a Steam machine, that's what they're going to call it, they're going to call it the Steam machine, my first red flag would be how does an owner of a Steam Machine update their Steam Machine? Because all, you know, all operating systems have to be updated. Microsoft does it basically without your permission. And Linux expects you to be an adult and expects you to update your operating system on your own. Are you going to start telling people that they can also hook up a mouse and a keyboard to this because frankly I mean yeah okay there's games you'd rather have a controller with I'm sure but you know the reason you want a computer if you're a gamer is, is so you can have access to mods like the, the, the library of Stellaris mods for example or the library of Crusader Kings 3 mods, for example. These are why you, you would want a computer. This is the difference between a computer and a console. Also, I think I've seen reports from people that seem knowledgeable about this, that this would be maybe the low end would be about 600, and the, the top end I would think you could squeeze that in maybe 1,200, maybe probably less than that. I mean, as long as you can keep the top end, I would think seven, eight hundred, 
I would think you could move some units with that. Um, I also think as long as you're, you have a way for people to update the operating system um, on their own, I, I really do think you could move some units and it could change some stuff. I've been a, Win, a Microsoft slash Windows skeptical since uh, Windows 8. Um, and now that I'm Linux all the time, I really see Linux as, if not the present, I mean, if not the future, the present. Um, I'm kind of skeptical using, using SteamOS as a daily driver. I get that they have, you know, commitments to their own operating system. That's fine. But, I mean, if all the operating system is free and such, why don't they just package Nabara? I'm running Nabara now. Uh, Nabara already has it to where they don't even let me, or they let me, but they suggest very heavily that I don't uh, use the terminal, that I use the updater and the GUI. And I think that would be much more accessible and successful for the uh, the clients or the the customers, I guess, that would be interested in purchasing a Steam machine. Um, one thing I would like to see, quite honestly, in, in a Steam machine, is I would like to see it be something you can repair yourself or something you can modify yourself and not use proprietary stuff but being that all the literature says that this is going to be uh proprietary ram and, and tweaked uh graphics card and tweaked ram and, and tweaked cpu i don't know how true that is i don't know if that's just something i want or something that's going to be able to happen to where you'll be able to modify uh your device yourself or pay somebody to do it or whatever but also, I want to set people at ease. I don't think that the, a device like this, even on the top end, is going to be 1100 um, I certainly don't. Because first of all, you can get a pretty, you can get a very good PC off the shelf for cheaper than that. That would, that would play most games very well anyway. And most people, I mean, you hear all the time, PC Master Race. Most people who play PCs aren't playing on 4K. I mean, you know, most people aren't. Anyway, I just thought as a Linux user, oh, and something else, you know, that as a Linux user, once you put a Linux device in people's houses, you can use it, You they can start to possibly use it as a, uh, as a computer for things other than gaming, such as maybe you could throw a, uh, you know, a mouse and keyboard on there and they can do all kinds of things with it. I, I mean, word processing immediately comes to my mind, but something even cooler is video editing. Something, a machine like this as a video editor would be pretty neat. I, I gotta say, that might be pretty cool. Um, anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, comment down below and like I'm saying this is Metallic Penguin um, thanks everybody